I am Tori Podmajerski. I am so grateful to be joining you today. And uh, it sounds like it's been a wonderful day so far. I wasn't able to join for the part that was really in the middle of the night for me um, in the, the Northwest of the US right now, uh, but it's about 4.15 in the morning, so I'm good to go. And I'm gonna share my screen here and, uh, and get started. I'm here today to talk about text patterns and how that can help unlock your creativity in your design. And uh, this is also a new thing for me. Only a couple times before have I presented right from Figma, but uh, thank you to the organizers for giving me that boost of having all these great slide templates in Figma ready to go. So let's let's do it. I'm going to talk about why to use text patterns, what they actually are, and what they might look like, and then how to use them. So let's talk about why to use them. I think that in the previous panel, um, uh, Kingsley was talking about uh, sometimes, although he gets to work with the UX writer, sometimes he also does that UX writing himself. And, and writing is really everybody's job. UX writers or content designers like myself work really hard to, to bring all of these things together for the designs, for the user experiences that are happening. We need to make sure the concepts are correct, the grammar is correct, that it's concise, that it's clear, but really it needs to be complete and scannable so that people understand it without feeling like they need to be reading. It also needs to be respectful to them. It needs to maintain that humans are in a conversation uh, with the experience. It needs to be purposeful and, and recognize why that, perp that person is even in that experience. It also needs to be accessible to them. And that means things both legally for accessibility in, in many countries, and also just is it, uh, is it useful when somebody isn't, uh, doesn't do a lot of reading usually? How does that even work? And it needs to be accurate, right? Like things need to be actually showing up and be correct. So if that's our target, we want everybody to be able to hit that target with their darts, obviously. But how do we do that? Well, that target might be pretty far away. It might be pretty low on your list of things to be doing. But what you can be doing is uh, using your voice as defined, using a style guide, using terminology. If you don't have any of that, the patterns can still help. So you're, you're standing there, you're throwing darts at that wall, you're trying to hit that target. String patterns or text patterns, think of them as a boost. This is why to be doing this. The patterns get us closer to our target faster with less trial and error. So that's the why, very simple. Let's talk about the what. What do text patterns actually mean? So in my book, I have these 11 different patterns. There's a couple different patterns for titles, for actions like buttons or menu items people can choose, descriptions, empty states, labels, controls, text inputs, transitions, confirmations, notifications, errors, and several different kinds of errors at that. This is a lot of patterns to go through. We're not going to go through all of those in this talk today. I'm going to look at three of them right now. Let's start with an empty state. So the purpose of an empty state is to set somebody's expectation. So this is when somebody comes to the app um, and you, you want to have a list of conversations people have had. You want to have a list of the, the files they've downloaded. You wanna have whatever the information is, but that information isn't there yet because they just started using the app. Okay, what do you put there? It's a great design challenge. It's a great place to show the brand. It's a great place to teach people what will be happening. So you can do this. You can build that excitement and you can indicate that it's on purpose, that this is empty on purpose. So if the person can take action, it really works well to start with uh, a title like verb the noun. So you take some action, start a chat with someone, and that's in this rewrite here on the Reddit app on the Pixel 3 phone. This is actually an old version of the app um, in case you're 
using it now and going, that's out of date. Um, it used to say, your chats will show up here. Okay, but that doesn't tell me what I can do, right? And you can take an action here. You can start chatting. So if the title is verb the noun, start a chat with someone, the description to do X, do Y, or if X happens, you'll see Y. So start chatting here or on someone's profile and all your messages will be here. If you do this thing, you'll get here. That's the pattern we're following. And the button can be a verb. In this case, start chatting instead of chat now, but this is all uh, to be iterated. And we'll talk about that iteration in just a moment. So by starting with a pattern, you get pretty far and you see these patterns. Once you start thinking in these patterns, you start seeing them everywhere because we're all using them um, and, and we end up at effective places. So let's talk about a notification. This text is very small here in the middle of a, a Lyft app. Um, and it says, mask up to move forward. This was, I think in 2021, I took this screenshot. So everybody was masking and everybody was being reminded to mask. Um, mask up to move forward. Again, the pattern is to do X, verb the noun. It's very directive, very, um, uh, the voice is very like, do the thing, do the thing right now. But it can also be read in an inviting way. So wearing a face covering is required to ride. These echo these patterns all the time. It, they really come in handy when we talk about error messages. When we're talking about errors, sometimes we need to detour them. They, a person can still do what they want to do. They just have to do it a different way than, than they tried, right? They can't get there from here, but they can go another way. The purpose of a detour error message is to help people meet their goal, even though they didn't get there the first time. So here uh, we're saying, so the original error was error applying coupon. And then there was a code error where the code was showing up, but the message should have been the coupon code you entered doesn't exist. Please try again. Okay. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's a bug to have it show up as code. But if it said, the title with the pattern of verbing the noun, enter the coupon code, you can add the again to recognize that somebody already did order uh, enter it. Um, and then the description, because of problem name, do X. Because of the code you entered doesn't exist, check the code and try again. And then the button should be a verb that matches that uh, verb in the title. And actually in the book, in the title and button, we talk a lot about having those verbs match so that um, so that people know that they're taking the right action. So this kind of error message pattern works for so many kinds of errors and is so much easier than trying to come up with error text from scratch for every kind of edge case. Now let's talk about a blocking error. Um, I don't know if you've ever played the game Among Us. I got this great error message one time, Among Us auto 2526 forcibly disconnected because reliable packet without response. That is not an error message. I hope we can all agree that that is just some, some developer placeholder that should never have been shown to a user, should never have been shown to a player of the game. But we can still use the pattern. So the pattern for a blocking error that I suggest is to title it with a problem name so that people know, oh, I've hit a problem. And then the description, because of the problem, you can't X until something Y happens. So disconnected from server. Because your computer didn't respond to our server, you can't play until you reconnect. That's frequently what reliable packet without response means. I don't actually work for Among Us, but I, I'm, you know, here's a, here's a hint. We can get there from here. So the key idea here is that patterns are a guardrail, not a fence. They're a guardrail to keep you 
on that track to to get you started in the right direction to keep you moving in that right direction but you can still change it i hope you saw that in each of those examples you don't stay at the pattern sort of rigidly like i can only use a verb and then verb the noun in this way no you can add other words and you can move that around they're a place to start so how do we actually use them let's get into it let's talk about when you would use them in the design process this is a very simplified diagram of of any design process there's going to be some divergence where you think of lots and lots of ideas and some convergence where you narrow it down to just the ideas that you're going to be using, just the final ideas. You might sketch, I think we heard in the last panel about, you know, like stay on paper, get all those great ideas out there. It's incredibly important to do that. And this is where you can have that expansive thinking and go in lots of directions. When you are converging and making like, oh, here is the actual screen that will go next in line to do this thing, that's when you have to be narrowing down those ideas. And that narrowing is where we would use these um, patterns. You would use the patterns when you are doing your iterations, when you're doing your design systems, when you're doing your audits. You avoid using them when you're doing your foundational research to find out how do people talk about this? To, to think, where do I want to go with this? To go, you know, how are we even going to solve this problem? Don't use patterns for that because the patterns are literally the, the well-trodden path of, of the ways you always want to go. So where do you go? Where do they go in the system? They go with the rest of the design system that you would use for your iterations for that converge cycle. Now, I uh, when I'm doing uh, individual screens, I frequently use the Figma libraries like the Wireframing Starter Kit um, by Tiago Gonzalez is fantastic. I've used it through several iterations now. Um, just, I mean, it's not for pixel perfect anything, but for getting that idea, like going from paper to then, um, let me make this look a little bit better than my Sharpie marker on the paper. Then using these, um, using these wireframes. And when we have, and I'm using them here as a stand-in for design system components. When I worked at Google, when I worked uh, at Microsoft on Xbox, when I worked on OfferUp, we had components that we frequently reused. And we, when we can populate those with the text patterns already to just prompt people to go in the right direction, prompt designers to go in the right direction when they can't work with a content designer, prompt um, uh, PMs when they're going into the design system and just saying, oh, I will make it myself. Let's start them off with the right patterns for the text. It doesn't need to just say title. It can actually give that pattern to give people a good start. And we can do that in anything. Like here's a first run um, flag sort of thing. Do this first because of this very good reason that you recognize and appreciate. Even if they're a little bit cheeky, they help people uh, draft their first text uh, correctly inside those patterns, gives them a prompt. Uh, and here's the error message we saw, uh, one of the error messages we saw before, to do X, you need to do Y. You don't have enough Y to do X. To fix that, please go to ABC and do MNO. Learn about error Y for X and then close. So having these components, having the text right in the components so that people can get started right away makes an enormous difference. And I want to talk about uh, AI. I think AI has come up at every um, talk and every conference I've been at in the past year. And it's for a good reason. Um, it's all over uh, changing what we do in design. Uh, so I wrote up this little script with ChatGPT 
um, after, and I asked, uh, I think it was Dali to um, illustrate it for me. What if I wanted to just, what if I'm a, a UX writer or a, a designer or a PM and I want to write a notification to show on an iPhone for an app called Duck App to remind someone to check their mailbox for a message? Great, so I've told it that I want it to be on iPhone. The app is called Duck App, what the person needs to do. I've already written more than the entire notification would be. And then ChatGPT tells me notification title, Duck App mailbox reminder. And then the rest of this is a notification for an iPhone according to G Chat GPT. That's not gonna work. This won't fit. This won't work. It's very cute, but it won't work. So I need to work harder, right? So I say, try again, but keep the title under 40 characters and the body under 100 characters. And then it says, check mailbox, open duck app for a new message. So now I've just done at least three times as much typing and reading to get a pretty mediocre message. And so I say, try again, but keep some of the fun from the first iteration. It says, quack, check mail. Time to dive into your mailbox and duck app. Okay, that might work. It's using emoji. Isn't that delightful? I haven't told it. I mean, there's other ways to prompt chat GPT. You can put an awful lot of content in a, in a first prompt and I recommend doing that. Um, I didn't do that in this example. Uh, if you're going to be using this, the thing to keep in mind is that generative AI does express common patterns. That is all that it does. Uh, it is learning from uh, well more than millions uh, of, of content already available online and in other places. And it's distilling from that and it's learning from that. Uh, that's usually from a biased data set. It's usually without the knowledge or consent of the originators, the creators of that content. So you need to keep that in mind when you're using ChatGPT or any of the AI. But this talk is about using these patterns and you can definitely use these patterns. If you want to be using these patterns strategically, you might want to embrace them more fully in the rest of your practice so that you know what to use and what to reject from ChatGPT, from, from these other AI. So how do we use them at all? Well, the editing process is uh, for the text inside a UI is uh, it usually gets longer before it gets better and before it's finished. So as you add the the all the purposes you want it to to do, it gets longer and longer. Then you make it more concise. Maybe you make it more conversational so that it um, is more respectful to the people that is are using it who are in conversation with it. And then you make it clear, and the 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 wording changes. So. If we take a notification from a transit system, like your payment method has expired, your monthly pass will not be renewed. And you say, well, that's not in our voice and it's unlikely to get people to actually pay. So let's remind them what they need to do. Let's make it purposeful. We'll update the payment expiration date to keep riding. Update your payment method for your monthly pass. We'll, we'll just keep making copies and iterating this text until it is purposeful. And we'll do that with concision. We'll do that with conversation. We'll do that to make it clear. And we have an awful lot of examples. Now, this is about starting with a pattern, knowing those patterns internally, and then iterating to make it right. And then we choose our best ones from that. And we write them up. And we say, here's our options. And we recommend one as the designer. And we say, let's focus on the credit card and then the timeline. We're gonna say, update your credit card expiration date. Notice that this follows a 
verb the noun pattern here. And then to ride easier next month, update your card before next month. Sure. So following the patterns also lets us know why are we choosing one of these over the other? Why are we recommending them? Why do we think that they'll work? And that's all stuff that we can use when we're presenting solutions to our, our colleagues, to our PMs, to our devs. So here's the, the big idea. We use these text patterns for speed and for quality. That's why I recommend them. So that's been the why, the what, and how of them. And that's me. Thank you so much for having me, everybody. <laughs>